In the next few videos, we're going to look at how we can manipulate tools and subtools using Zscript. Let's look at three pieces of information we can extract from a subtool. First, we're going to look at I get title, and this gets the title of the subtool. If you use I get title, comma, and then you say tool subtool item info, you get the title of the subtool in this format. So I get title, I get this subtool selected, and I get Q underscore Q, which is the title, and then I get a dot. Now we'll get back to I get title and I'll show you a, a routine you can create to get the proper title without that dot. If I duplicate, for example, if I duplicate this subtool, I can rename it to be the same name as the previous subtool. So I get title will be the same thing for both subtools. So you can't get a subtool by the title because it will just get the first subtool present that has that title. Now let's look at subtool get ID. This will get the ID of the, the selected subtool if you don't pass an index. So if there's no index like here, I don't have an index, it will give me the ID of the selected subtool. You would think that get ID would give you a different ID for each subtool, but if this subtool is a duplicate, so if I duplicate this subtool and I get the subtool get ID, I get this ID here, 136.13954. If I look at the ID of this one, it's exactly the same one, 136.13954, because it's a duplicate, it gets the same ID. So you have to be careful when you're using ID, it's not different ID for everything. If I append a new subtool here, let's append a cylinder here, and I get the ID for this. Now this one is a different ID, ends with 37, because it's not a duplicate of one of these cubes, but a duplicate will give you the same ID. So you need to be careful. When I first started the scripting, I thought the ID was a unique ID, just like it says, but if it's a copy, then a duplicate or a copy, then it has the same ID. We end up working more with the index of a subtool and the index is zero based. If I come here, and I press my index, I have my third subtool selected here. My index is two because this is zero based. So if I select my first subtool, the index is zero. My second subtool, the index is one. And my third tool, the index is two. So we, when working with subtools and tools, we use index more than anything else. Now the index can change, obviously. So right now this subtool is index two. Let's say if I move it up, now it's index one. It can change, but we can save the position and move it up and down using these buttons here. And you got the button path. So tool, subtool, move up, sub, tool, select up, select down. You can use these buttons and control your subtools with this system. Now you can use the command subtool select to select the subtool. And remember, it's zero based. So I got three buttons. First one selects subtool zero, the second subtool one, and the third subtool two which basically means that if I press this one, I'm selecting the first subtool, which is zero. If I press this one, I'm selecting the second subtool, subtool select one, and in the third one, subtool select two, will give me the third subtool. Now this zero here is saying that the subtool exists. So if it gives you zero, the subtool exists. So let's say I don't have this last subtool. Let's delete this last subtool and I try to get it it gives me a minus one because it doesn't exist. So you can use this when, for example, you're doing a certain operation on different subtools. You want to do something on all subtools and you use, and you do something on the first subtool or the second subtool. And when you go to the third subtool, you can ask, you can have an if else statement. If this gives me minus one, then stop the operation and leave the loop, for example. So I created a little routine called squeeze all. And what is this is going to do is going to set tool deformation squeeze to 20. If I come down to my deformation palette, I have here the command squeeze. And basically what I'll be doing is I'll bring this to 20 on each one of the subtools. So let's look at this routine and see what it does. Okay, so now I'm looping through all the subtools and I'm using this special command subtool get count it will give me the count of all the subtools in this tool 
So you got three sub tools. So it's going to loop three times. And if when you select a sub tool and I get a loop count here, so first time in the loop, it will be zero, then one, then two. If sub tool select doesn't equal minus one, it's because the sub tool exists. So I'm going to set tool deformation squeeze to 20. And if the sub tool doesn't exist, I'm going to do a loop exit and finish my operation. So if I save this, I come here. And by the way, this is asking if it doesn't exist at the same time, it's selecting the sub tool. Okay. So if I use this command and press squeeze all, boom, all the three sub tools are squeezed. They all get selected one by one and they're squeezed. I just undo this. Now I use this operation just to exemplify how you can use the equals minus one to check if the sub tool exists. We could also do something simpler like this. And this, if I reload, will do exactly the same thing. Now going back to I get title and now you can get a sub tool name. I have a little routine here that will get you the proper name. And basically I'm getting the length of I get title and the sub tool item info, which is that that uh, title that we've seen with the dot and there's a space in the end if I'm not wrong. And then I'm setting sub tool name to be just that. And then I'm extracting sub from sub tool name starting at zero and removing two from the length. Two, which is the, the zero in the space if I'm not wrong here. And then the way you can use this function or uh, routine, I have a, a variable here. We, we spoke about routines and how this works. So I can set a variable whenever I want this to use this. Set a variable, and this is a global variable, so subtle name for this global variable. Nothing in it. I, I call my routine. I pass that same variable, and then I'm just outputting a note. And this way, if I select this for subtool, I press this, it gives me the subtool name exactly as it is, as you can see there. I hope this video was helpful and we're going to keep talking about subtools in the next few videos and tools as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.